You probably purchased your Apple III to solve a specific problem or to assist you with tasks that you had heard personal computers are able to do. This chapter will identify the subject's address by commercial pre-written software and show you how to begin to use two of the most common packages. You'll also learn how to use programs written for Apple II computers on your Apple III. And you'll learn the meaning of more words in this new computerese language you're beginning to understand. There are five general categories currently addressed by commercially available pre-written application software. Word processing, database management, financial forecasting and budgeting, accounting, telecommunications and electronic mail. Word processing packages allow you to write letters and reports, correct what you have written before you print it, instantly move words and paragraphs around. Merge mailing lists into letters, check spelling errors, even search and replace specific words or phrases. There are several word processing packages currently available for your Apple III, and more are becoming available almost monthly. You can have a wide range of features and capabilities that make the newest correcting electric typewriters obsolete. Database management programs allow you to create your own customized electronic file cabinet. You could then access those files in a large variety of ways, largely determined by your own particular needs. The most common example of a database management program is an electronic mailing list file. In that file, you could have the names, addresses, even telephone numbers of everyone you need to correspond with. For example, if you run a small business, you could tell your Apple III to sort through the mailing list of your customers by zip code. The program would arrange that order of addresses, then print the labels in that order so you can have the most efficient stack of envelopes to send to the post office. Or you might want to write to only those customers whose last names begin with the letter B. Your database manager could give you a list of those customers almost instantly. Essentially, a database management program files data and information in such a way as to allow access from many different directions. A word processor application program, on the other hand, stores data sequentially, usually allowing access in only one direction. But suppose you wanted to merge a mailing list and a form letter. You could get another software package that would allow that merger to take place. You've heard the names of many of the best-selling application software packages. You probably have one or more of them yourself. Apple Writer 3 and Word Juggler are popular word processor packages available for your Apple 3. Personal Filing System Mail List Manager, and PFS Report are three database systems that are extremely flexible and adaptable to your own needs. VisiCalc is one of the best-selling financial forecasting and budgeting packages. It allows financial projections and manipulations on numbers to be performed quickly and easily. Great Plains Hard Disk Accounting Series and Executive Accounting System are two accounting packages designed for businesses. Most systems for accounting provide general ledger, accounts payable, and accounts receivable and payroll functions. Telecommunications and electronic mail offer another exciting way to use your Apple. With the addition of a modem, which stands for modulator demodulator, you can literally use the telephone line coming into your business or home to call up another computer. That other computer can be another personal computer or a giant mainframe that offers a broad range of services to personal computer users. You may have heard of services such as CompuServe, The Source, and Dow Jones. They offer access to more than a thousand databases where information is stored and available to you on your Apple III. You can get breaking world, national, state, and local news and sports from UPI. Stock market quotes from Dow Jones. Shop at home from a computerized catalog of products. Send mail by computer to other parts of the country. Check airline schedules. Read movie, wine, and restaurant reviews. Even sell and buy almost anything on computerized bulletin boards. Many local newspapers around the country are available on your Apple when you use it as a remote terminal tied to another computer. You can even send electronic mail to other personal computer owners and receive mail from them. And then there are games and learning programs and tutorial packages to learn just about anything there is to know. Four-year-olds can learn basic math or reading skills. People of any age can expand their horizons, create new opportunities for themselves, and access an unlimited wealth of information. Let's take a look at a typical applications program package. 
One of the most popular in all of personal computing today is VisiCalc. It has been called the tail that wags the dog because so many personal computers have been sold so that people can use VisiCalc. VisiCalc is produced by a company called VisiCorp, which offers a wide range of software packages. VisiCalc is an electronic spreadsheet. It allows users to input letters and numbers at intersections of columns and rows. VisiCalc's fantastic power lies in its ability to allow formulas to also be placed anywhere on the sheet. When you first open the box for Apple III VisiCalc, you'll notice that there are two ring binders, four discs in the ROM packages, and a folding reference card. That is a very typical packaging system for software for your Apple III. The four discs are two main program discs, one for backup in case anything happens to the first one, a VisiCalc sampler, and a blank disc for your files. The user's manual is very comprehensive. It shows you what every possible command does when you run VisiCalc. It's divided into four sections. The first section of the user's manual is an introduction. The second is a tutorial that takes you step by step through the most common features and operating commands. The third section is a comprehensive reference of the commands available in VisiCalc. The fourth is a brief chapter giving you system configuration information for use with your system configuration program. And the fifth is a look at the special VisiCalc DIF filing system for advanced applications. The VisiCalc sampler is a collection of templates which will allow the user to quickly use VisiCalc before they've learned how to design their own templates. There are templates for a personal budget, a departmental budget, a construction estimate, the time value of money, and a depreciation schedule. These templates may be adapted or modified for your own use and could save you considerable time as you begin to use VisiCalc. The VisiCalc 3 program disk is a boot disk. Getting up on the program is simply a matter of booting the master disk by turning the power to your Apple 3 on or doing a control reset from the keyboard. When the blank electronic spreadsheet first appears, you're ready to begin to develop your own use for this amazing application program. At this point, you're on your own. Hopefully, you will have learned enough basic computer skills with this program so that the manuals are easier to understand. By following the tutorial and the user's manual carefully, you'll be working VisiCalc like a pro in a few short hours. It's really quite easy to learn and to adapt to your own needs. The best way to use VisiCalc is to figure out exactly what it is you want to do on paper before you begin. VisiCalc is a blank sheet that calculates. You must give it the formula. Do remember to have a disk already formatted if you want to save any work that you might generate with VisiCalc. One of the most common first-time user errors occurs after someone has put a lot of time and effort to build a sizable amount of data. They get ready to file a data on a volume only to discover that they haven't formatted a disk for that particular program. They must lose their work to format a disk. Have your volumes ready for whatever particular program you're working with before you begin that program. Let's work with another popular applications program, Apple Writer 3, a word processor. After we boot the Apple Writer 3 boot disk, the first thing to come up is this screen. It is then followed by this screen, telling us to press Return to continue. When we press Return, we get a menu of the most frequently used control commands. Apple Writer 3 uses control letter combinations frequently to change functions within the program. VisiCalc, on the other hand, accomplishes function changes with the prefix of the slash character. Both methods work well with their own program, but you must learn a whole new set of commands for each particular application's program. It won't take long, but it does require a careful examination of the manual for each program. With Apple Writer 3, you need only press the return key again to get to the text editor display. That is the main display that shows you what you are writing and allows you to edit your text. If you want to examine your files while you're in Apple Writer 3, you need only do a Control-O command, and the program will take you to a menu that enables you to use some of the sauce commands. Once you're at this menu, you need only type the number one for catalog, and a drive number if you are using more than one drive, and the program will show you the directory of your files. When you're finished examining the directory, you need only press return to the end of the catalog, and you'll be back in the text editor mode, ready to continue word processing. Here's a helpful reminder for you. Whatever the applications program you're using, don't forget to back up your disks. 
It's a good idea to save your progress on disk every 10 or 15 minutes. Remember the work you're currently doing is held in volatile memory. That means that any power failure, no matter how brief, could erase any work that you haven't saved. Some users make it a habit of frequently revising a backup disk as well. All it takes is a tiny bit of dust to cause problems with a disk. If you have a backup, you could save yourself hours, maybe even days of work. We won't show you how all the different software programs operate on this tape. It would be impossible. Just remember there are a few standard commands. Each commercial application program was programmed to serve its own function and the preferences of the programmer are usually what determines how they run. You may find, for instance, that a control K command may take you to a disk filing system in one package or start your printer printing in another. You must read the manuals carefully to fully understand an individual application program. There's a trend in the personal computer industry toward easier to understand manuals. Early manuals tended to be written at a level that most first-time users could not understand. You'll hear the term user-friendly used when referring either to the manuals or programs themselves. The people who developed your new application software program hope that it is user-friendly and easy for you to follow. Most manuals will give you the specific technical information you need to use that program. You'll be able to find out how much RAM is required, how many disk drives and other peripheral devices are needed, and what system configuration is necessary. An in-depth description of the software may follow, or a tutorial that will lead you step by step through the various features is usually included. There is also the copy protection feature. Some programs can be copied using the standard copy volume program available on your system utilities disk. Other programs may be so proprietary that the packager may want to prevent unauthorized copies. They have programmed secret codes into the program to prevent your Apple III from making a duplicate copy. If that's the case, be extremely careful with both your master and backup volumes. You might not be able to get replacements very quickly. Be sure to fill in whatever licensing agreements or warranty cards come with an application's package. Sending in these cards will help packagers identify you if you do need to get a replacement volume. And many software manufacturers even have hotline telephone numbers for users' questions or problems. Your personal computer dealer can't keep up with every aspect of every program on the market, but a reputable software house can stand behind their product and most do. Software is constantly being improved upon. Programmers are forever finding bugs and programs. You'll see the new version of a particular program being made available as these bugs are discovered and fixed. There are more and more applications programs becoming available for your Apple III every month. You have a very versatile personal computer that will grow with your needs and whose usefulness will get greater and greater as more programs are developed. There are also thousands of programs already written for the Apple II. In fact, the Apple II probably has more programs designed for it than any other personal computer. You can run many of the programs written for an Apple II on your Apple III. Included in the diskware you received with your Apple III is a disk called Apple II Emulation. This disk enables your computer to run most Apple II software. When you use this disk, you do lose many of the advanced features of your Apple III and programs will also run slower. But you can take advantage of the many programs available for the Apple II. For those of you who already have Apple II software or are planning to run Apple II software on your Apple III, check out the section in your owner's guide on the Apple II emulation disk. It'll get you up and running with Apple II software on your Apple III quickly. We have now covered all of the steps required to boot commercially available software and get it running on your Apple III. You should now be able to use your computer for almost any kind of common application you may have purchased it for. However, you may want to learn about programming to develop your own software, customized to your own application. If that's the case, the last chapter of this tape will give you a very brief introduction to programming. One of the common myths about computers is that you need a very extensive background in mathematics to program a computer. That just isn't so. The following chapter will show you that clear, logical thinking is the only prerequisite for successful computer programming.